Ten more seconds, folks, until the game gets started. And to the north, we're going to have Unity to the south, Team Dignitas. Remember, keep an eye out for that T32 from Team Dignitas out. here. And here they go. Yeah. Looking at the approach from what they can take. A bit of a spread is going to happen. It's very important to watch exactly where the tanks go right from the game start. You get a good look at what they're thinking for the map, where they want to be on the map, what kind of strategy they're going to deploy on the map against the enemy team. Lusa Quell is going to be in that heavy tank, moving all the way over to that east side. He's in that 5100. And looks like the admin's turning on the markers here. It's going to help us a lot as we commentate. Yep. Tell us who's who and who's in what. And back to the game. All right. A little bit of a slow approach here coming from the team. The team to the north. The team without the T-32s going a little bit more defensive. Their, yeah. their spread, they have most of their commitment down the four lane, down the four line here on that on that ridge road. And they could be a little bit exposed if they overcommit down this section here. But yeah. see how open the city is? That is easy pickings for a T-32 to move in there along with a Vidi-100 to back them yeah. up. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see Dim Team Dignitas noticing this strategy. If they see a bunch of the tanks, I, if they can get a good idea of where Team Unity has set up, they can definitely take advantage of that city route, especially with the T-32 that they've picked. Um, it's funny to see they have three of their uh, Tier 8 tanks right in the middle. It's none of the Tier 1s. They have their Tier 1s actually a little bit more back, uh, one of them in the Western uh, Valley area and one of them right above that leak. Referees uh, called for a pause, it looks like, communicating to the team that they need to pause the game, or at least not moving the game right now. Looks like one of the players has no response on his keyboard. And now one of the players asking if they need to go back to the garage. So this might be a bit of an uh, unfortunate. No, it no, oh, looks like oh, they're gonna okay. play it out. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, now the rule set that we have in America for WGLNA is that if there is, since, since it's played online except for the finals, if there's any sort of drop or something, they have to call it out before a tank is spotted. If a tank is spotted and a drop happens or some hardware malfunction happens, too bad. You have to play through. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. I think the rule is uh, yeah because you know if your team's losing, you kick out your cord. Oh hey guys, I had a disconnect. We'll get a regain. Yeah. It's not fair to anyone. So we see Lusaquel actually backing up even more into an even more defensive position yeah. right near his base. There has been a tank spotted in the Western Valley area. That is a heavy tank. Get a look right there. That is a T-32. We see the AMX-50, Navi slide moving up here, trying to get a spot, but doesn't quite get anything. Now that scouting information is going to be crucial, but so is getting to the proper position to land those shots and to do so without getting hit yourself. Uh, it's just, you know, it's tanks 101, man, but... The thing about World of Tanks is you're going to get shot out and you're going to get hit. And it's how you properly angle your armor to try to bounce off those hits, which is very important. That, team, that T1 there are going to be a very crucial scout for that T32. But this is this is great for Team Dignitas because look at the full commitment of Unity up to that northern side. The entire city area is open. Yeah. And I think even Team Unity is recognizing this. They sent the T1 over there because they have to know if push is going to come. I mean... They're basically saying, okay, you can go for the city if you want. We're going to give that up. Uh, it's just up to you to make the call now. We're going to play defensive. We have spotted one of your tanks, and we just want to see what you do from here. We're going to play very defensive. They had their two heavy tanks all the way in the back. And uh, it also looks like the T-32 is not moving much. He's trying to fire, get some shots down, but not having too much luck so far. Yeah, this is this is distraction fire from nuclear here. Yeah. And it could be even blind fire trying to shoot into some places. He thinks the tanks are at, but has no scouting of it. He, know, he, he knows he's spotted, uh, but he's going to have to wait and wait and see here what the rest of his team's going to do. We have no eyes, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, on the opposite team here. At least we haven't gone back to it. Now, Brent and I are not in control of uh, of of the observer here. Yeah, we're on a different feed over here. Today. Just next to the main, to the the D stage we're at to see these players. And now we have a couple more tanks here. One 1390 is spotted. He's gonna he's gonna dance a bit back and forth here as the T32 can cover his position. 
heavy tank so they're going to push this now with four minutes and 42 seconds left on the clock it's going to be difficult to try to reset themselves to go a different approach here i think the city's going to be out of the question um, unless they're able to get their fast movements over there quickly one of the t1s i believe is going to be scouting that approach but even if they get that t1 there that's going to turret break their opponents so what i mean by turret break is their turrets are now are now focused down that that valley and if they move their turrets over to the east that means that the danger is not coming from the north anymore. Even though the tanks are there, they're not looking that way. And those tanks can move forward, get a couple shots in. Yeah. We see a T-69 here for Team Unity, trying to move into that middle lane. Arclid is that one that was all the way over on the east. A couple more, sh couple more shots, almost like warning shots coming out of the T-32, but he can afford to shoot him here since he's not an autoloader. But uh, either of these teams going to have to make a decision. We'll have to check with the admins on the rule set if this is a draw. Uh, if no points are awarded and the teams move on or if they have to replay the map, I'm not sure. Um, bit of a language barrier here, folks, as we speak to the different admins and stuff, but we will get it figured out. And there has been some shots fired against the 5100, Navi Sly. Yeah, also on to the Amex 1390 over there, Riddle has taken one shot from the T32, I believe. Again, those warning shots and definitely Team Dignitas is going to come up that valley. I think they're just going to take it easy for now. They still have three minutes to make this push. They have gotten a few good shots, and I don't see any damage on to Team Dignitas just yet. Um, so that definitely could come into their favor if they go for a push. They do have those three heavy tanks. Could work out very well for them if they do do that. Now, Arklin, he's, he's gathering information here by going through the city to make sure no tanks are there. If there are tanks there, and if, I, if Arklid found one medium and one heavy or two heavy tanks, then that means the valley side of Team Dignitas could push straight south. And as long as they push past the T32 and get the shots to the side of it, they would win that battle. But Arklid's not going to see anything over that city side, I believe, my friend. That T32 is still going to be spotted here. Now two minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. Look uh, at this. Now we're seeing a bit of a push. Yeah, Team Unity, they want to reposition here. They do not want to stay over in that valley area. They, they have to assume that Team Unity is going to make that push in the valley, but they are going to send right now two of their tier eight tanks over to the city, try to maybe come all the way around. They have sent uh, just a light and uh, medium tank, so it does have the mobility to get around, I guess. But it's going to be it's going to be a close one here at the end if they do get all the way around. Sequel moving down to 5100, now to the south, slightly south. Nope, he's going to stop just behind the rocks. Thought he's going to push forward here, but. Yeah, that city side's going to see a little bit of action, but no tanks are going to fire back and forth. Uh, there could possibly be the eight-point rule that's in place here for World of Tanks. Again, I'll have to check with the admin. Meaning that if a team destroys uh, eight points or higher, the enemy team, or if they have eight points more, the enemy team, it is a victory for them. Now, only one tank has been destroyed. That's one of the T1s here. Rhinel has taken a couple hits in his 1390. He's going to back off. Arklet's still going to be the point man. For the T-69 and the 1390 that's with him from the east side. A minute and 13 seconds left. It's going to take all three tanks to get to that flag capture very, very quickly here in order for them to get a victory. We also have what looks like an AMX 1390 going down the mid lane for Team Unity. It seems like they want to make something happen over here. Maybe take out a tank that's back here trying to guard the base. The T-1 has been spotted, so they do know that at least a couple of tanks are over here for Team Unity. And another T1's going to fall. Now a 10 HP left for Team Dignitas. He's going to move up in that T1 and get a little bit closer. MR Lee's going to hold his shot because he wants Arxless to get that kill. It's a bit of a wasted shot for a 1390 to get that kill because he would be down to five shots instead of six for an engagement. But now 30 seconds left on the clock. This is going to be near impossible for these teams to have a clear victory here if that rule set is in place. But if the T1 driver T33 tries to push up just a little bit, he may see something around that corner. 
only one tank is spotted. It is that T-32. A couple shots are firing. Sitting well from the 5100. It does not land on the T-32. Now Nami slide moving up. Right approach here. They did have the city side open. They were able to get some good map control, but too little too late. As now time has run out. And the match is over. So now we have to get an official uh, ruling on what's going to happen with the draw. I would assume since uh, there was no eight tier point advantage, we are probably going to go into a regame, uh, go into another best of one here. Yep. What we're going to do, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to confirm with the admins, and we'll be back in just a little bit.
Welcome back, guys. It looks like the rule is they're going to replay, but this time it's going to be a different map. That map is Ensk. Actually, one of the coolest maps we've seen in the metagame shift, the sixth line. Teams going down those railroad tracks to get that engagement going right off the bat or some quick fly caps. East side hardly ever played at all. And also a couple of down the one line approaches. But a lot of the engagements we're going to see is actually down the two and three line in this corridor right here. Some of the different take fights. But we've seen some Pershings use the railroad system to get the long range sniping to get a couple of quick hits. If any of these tanks trying to do the same, we're going to move in to uh, approach halfway down the map on a flank. But looking forward to what these teams are going to bring, Brennan. Tank Destroyer being used on the side of Team Dignitas. He gets the first kill against Driver 233. Uh, the RHM B WT is being used here. This is not its not a standard tank that I've seen in the, in the 7x42 over in the States, my friend, but I'm excited to see it because this is a huge lockdown on that railroad track by having that Tank Destroyer there. Not as mobile, but if he keeps him in a defensive position to that top area, he can cut off half the map. Now we're getting those IS-3s and a little bit of that Eastern approach you talked about. So I might be swallowing my words here, saying the East has hardly ever played. Uh, but again, the international scene, seeing what these different teams bring here is, is exciting to see. Lucid Quell seems to be the man of the hour here in the 51 we've been following. He's going to see that T1. It's not going to take a shot yet. He's going to stop, wait for it. And he's going to wait for MR to take another shot. He loses the engagement. Lucky Rusher gets the kill. T1 fire. IS3 fire going down now. T1 still left alive. He's getting some great information. He's getting a lot of information after winning that T1 fight. Engagement happening right there in cave one. And the T1's gonna, it's gonna go for the crash. Oh no, just getting out of the way. T1's trying to stay behind the debris. He's gonna miss the shot. No, he gets it. Pavel gets the kill at 5100. However, IS3 is able to see him in case a quick shot against him. Pavel's gonna be down one hit, one of those shots in his six shot autoloader here. He's gonna fall, guy, get behind some of the buildings, but actually destroying a little bit of cover at the way. I'm really, really uh, taken back by the passive play of Team Dignitas. So defensive here. Uh, not even positioning the T1s further down the line on either side, and that's allowing Unity to get down past the F line into enemy territory and getting the aggression here. But now we're seeing one of the heavy tanks go up to the north side, and that is going to be crucial if he's able to round the corner on the top of the railroad tracks and land a couple hits from the rear of Unity's position. Right now on the IS-3, he's going to be the one moving to the top section here. Uh, he's a couple, couple spots happening on the map saying, hey, guys, check these areas, but nothing, nothing happening yet.
Shanish could be in a bad spot here as the other 5100 from Navi Slide is going to move in and help Renault. They're not going to go for the flag cap yet because that would reveal their position. The average is going to push down. He will see that AMX 5100 move behind the building. And that's going to allow him to take only then a couple shots here against the side. And he does against against one of the 5100s. And now the engagement is going to happen on the other side against the 5100 and the K1 side. He is about one solid hit away, two hits away from the IS-3. Completely surrounded, but he's not going to go down without a fight. Pavel takes another hit against Nuclear, but here comes Copy. And he is able to get the kill. Nuclear, he's going to have a higher HP pool against Arklet and the IS-3 against the 110. 110, the Chinese tank design, is an improvement, some say, over the IS-3. And we're going to see a one-on-one -on -one battle here. The Shuka, the front of the 110, is better than the IS-3, and he gets the kill. Cappy's still left alive here. Navi Slide and the 5100 going to try to hide behind some buildings as his IS-3 counterpart is going to be the point man. However, 5-4 right now on the tank score. Three minutes and 43 seconds left on the clock. That tank destroyer may not be mobile, but it is going to be in a good place to do some serious damage against the remainder heavy tanks. Slide tries to get a hit against Cappy, but it does not land. If it did land, it would have been a complete point reset. Since it's only one tank there, now going to push in. 80. Now two tanks are on the capture here, doubling up the point capture. Now at 90. 92. Five points left. Can they get the reset with one shot? It has to be an actual capture. And the flag has been captured. That is going to be a victory. Yeah, that, that tank destroyer lockdown, I find that to be very intriguing. Now, later on in the game with the flag capture, Team Dignitas was able to hold it and to land those shots, locking down those 5100s, as we talked about earlier, locking down those 5100s. So great play by them, very great play by them. Team Dignitas with the victory there. Uh, looking forward to our next matches, my friend. Look, what, looking forward to what more will the tanks matches we're gonna see. Uh, but the next match on the schedule is Warcraft 3, and that is going to be Elegant from China against Moon from Korea. Moon is a superstar here at WCG here in Korea, or here in China. The unit, that's right. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we come back. WCG Grand Finals continues after this.
Welcome back, folks. After checking with the rule system, after a draw, no teams are awarded any points. Team Unity, uh, I guess, has been awarded the point. Air running on the same page. This is a best of three. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure it's Team Dignity. I was, I was Team Dignity toss that one that team, last team match. Team Dignity won the last match, yes. <laughs> uh, they Where are at four points, and uh, yeah. Team Unity now in the well, south. Whoever, whoever stands up and celebrates, that's who we're going to say wins <laughs> here. But uh, after that draw, there's no match point here. And in the best of three, if it all lands in a complete draw, if it lands in a complete draw here, then both teams are awarded one match point. The match points are what accumulate to find out who goes to the bracket stage. Now we have to have a clear winner here in order to get three match points. But since we've had a draw and one win, one of these teams have won, we, we know that. The flag cap. Uh, pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure it was Unity since they were green. I, I don't know, I mean, I guess we'll find out, but already <laughs> a bunch of a bunch of shots fired onto this AMX 13, 14 Digitas. He's down to 115 health. He's backing behind this mountain, but he is pretty cornered. Uh, Team Unity has a very nice position here. And now MR Lee is going to come around, try to finish the kill. Oh, it's he a bounce. It's a bounce off of Antioch. He's still got a couple more shots left in him. And he's not going to fully commit here. MR Lee, no. Lusaquel and the Pershing is able to get the kill there. Cliff. Yeah, going to Unity so far. Very nice positioning there. They were able to corner that guy around the hill. But now Amarli has to run away here. A lot of his allies are coming over here. Two more AMX 13s are coming around the bend. They are actually going to corner this Team Dignitas tank. If they aren't careful, they will take this down. And I think nice Amarli. Nice ram damage from Anul right there, keeping his teammates still alive. Beautiful play. And now with Unity up two Tier 8 tanks, they do have a significant advantage. Another uh, Amex, uh, another, yeah, Amex 13 tank that does go down here, so they are up three tanks now already. It just seems like Unity is rolling over Team Dignitas once again. They didn't quite roll over them in the last game, but now with the momentum that they have, they are playing very well in this game. Positioning is very good. Get going! For the cleanup here, the two team wants to left alive for Team Dignitas. Now Unity's going to push in and get the cleanup. The Pershing's going to go down here in a matter of seconds, 215. They're able to get. T69. However, Nuclear gets a revenge kill on 1590, but the Pershing from Lusa Quell, the MVP in this matchup, is able to get the kill. Two T1s still left alive. They're going to be pinging the flag, saying, hey, where are they at? Not going to find them yet. They're going to go to the north. Navi Sly tries to get a shot on the one T1 from far away. Can he do it from downtown? No, looks like the T69 can't get the kill. But Lusa Quell and the Pershing will be on the chase. And once Lusa Quell picks that last kill up, he will have three. Kills. Actually, he's going suicide into the river, yeah. and that is another win, actually, for... Well, Lucic is actually going to get the kill. He goes into the water. He tries to light up the shot as soon as his tank stops. It's going to keep sliding here. He's able to get the shot. No, looks like he can't. Not That's quite. game victory. Unity is able to take it. They wanted the blood here. They wanted the blood, and they got it. They Unity got it. very, very well played in that match, especially... Showing they just had the better tactics. They they got a really nice position around that hill. I think maybe uh, that tank for Team Dignitas, the first one that got killed, he was maybe a little bit too aggressive. He did go in a really dangerous spot, actually, if uh, Unity gets that position, which they did. And from there, it just kind of snowballed. Um, I believe another one of their tanks trying to pick up a revenge kill, but actually getting cornered by three tanks and then once down two tanks. It just kind of was clean up from there for Team Unity. On the west side, we call it the donut with that rock in yeah, that yeah. area, and then you can go around it. And a lot of engagements have made or break teams in that section, but Cliff always comes down to that center control, and they had that center control, and they were able to get it. Team Unity from Russia looks like is a one to get the two wins there after that draw. Apologize about the confusion, guys, but again, language barrier here is a little bit difficult to overcome, but we're able to overcome it and present these games to you yeah. in English. Yep. to our international audience. Uh, Brendan, I look forward to the next game, and that's going to be Warcraft 3 Elegant versus Moon coming up. Afterwards, we're going to have another World of Tanks match as these teams from around the world are going to compete to find out who's the best of the best in the world at the WCG Grand Finals. We'll see you in a little bit.